Hello, everyone, and welcome to this bonus episode, a bonus episode where we uh, talk about disability topics while not having a guest. Uh, these are short, uh, shorter versions of our episodes, kind of talking about things that are newsworthy in the community. Yeah, and also we appreciate the support that we've yeah. had from this, not only from World Rehab, but also from the people that right in i think they get a bit of interaction a lot of interaction on the socials yeah which we enjoy that's what it's about so keep your comments you know we, we have a no bully zone and stuff like that but if you want to get involved have a chat about it share it that'd be awesome it's a great place that we are opening up conversation obviously it's still and i having a conversation but there are other opinions out there are other topics so um please continue yeah to get into the comments and have that really robust friendly yeah. conversation if you disagree with us let us know yeah please like, we're, we're all about in fact that. you asked for it a couple of weeks yeah. ago yeah in regards to the plastic straws yeah um, this one I want to talk about. Well, this would have been released a couple of weeks ago um, because it was topical and it still is topical and I want to talk about it and uh, and play some of the audio from it. But um, the Queen's funeral obviously was more topical at the time um, as you were going over there. Um, but let's go back and talk about the job summit, um, the incredible job you did in Canberra. And did you get invited to that or did you have to, you know, to put your hand up and say, I want to be there and speak or? No, definitely not. So we had a... There was 100 people invited. It ended up being 129 because I think everybody wanted to go, especially big business and unions and yep. and government and things like that. So, yeah, got invited by the tre- it was the treasurer's event. Um, and obviously Prime Minister Albanese was there, about seven of his cabinet, every single premier. And then, you know, the um, Twiggy Forest and, and the – Alan Joyce and the head of Coles, um, Stephen Kane, and and then unions and and but then advocate advocacy groups as well and and all kinds of people. So yeah, man, I was like out, I felt out of my depth to mm. be honest in that way. Um, but yeah, it was it was a it was a cool experience. It it was a proper summit where they had panels. So like at the UN or whatever, you know, there's always that like panel yeah. on specific topics. So there'd be one about um, gender pay gap, one about climate, one about disability, whatever. And then they would go to the floor and you literally had two minutes. So you mic on two minutes. They'll be like, no, nah, they've all got two minutes. That's it. And you had no, no, like Grammy wrap up music. It's just like, no, no, no. There's the a red light. There's a, there's a moderator who's like, oh, thanks very much. See you later. Fair enough too. Because like. You should get your two minutes and practice it and make sure it stands for something. Well, if you go for seven and everyone's like, look, yeah. uh, especially in those inst- instances, some organisations might just be like, we are doing this and it's like a soapbox to say how much of a legend your business is. Or yeah. um, I think they did a pretty good job of there wasn't like proper like arguments because that's just – it's like it's like when you're in government in the chamber. It's just like, well, nothing's happening here. Like you're just yelling. That wasn't – it was actually pretty collaborative. Different opinions yeah. but in a collaborative way. And there was actually a fair – it was actually some good – it's a good honest speaking, but there was a lot of speech reading as well, like yeah. pre-prepared. Yeah. And that's where I went rogue because I was like, oh, I probably might say this. And I was like, I'm just going to speak like myself. I'm not mm. going to talk corporately. I'm just going to try and make people have a listen. And um, yeah, I mean, you tell me, uh, I think it went all right. Obviously, th- I mean, I text you, I thought you did an incredible job, um, beyond incredible. And I think, you know, some of the messages that we've got um, – is that people who have sent us messages at listenable underscore podcast on Instagram have been like, you know, thank you. I th- think you did a really great job. And, you know, there's a lot of able-bodied people who didn't realise the, stati- the statistics and by you getting on the telly and reminding people about disability jobs or lack thereof, that brings a wider understanding to it. So I think also um, i just like to say I do not speak for every disabled person. Yeah. There's a, and a lot of, not a lot, but some advocates, go, I agree. They think they are. Oh, I'm, I'm like, I would wish there was more disability voices there. There was a few of us, about three or four, probably need to be more, 20% of the population. But um, I'm just doing the best that I can about, I'm just doing the best that I can about what I what I know. And um, and that's, you know, all I, all I can ask. I've heard the word disability 33 times today. That didn't happen in the past. That's great. It really is great. I've also heard about the massive opportunity because of the low unemployment rate and the staff shortages that are currently going on. That's great as well. We've had this opportunity before, and we've dropped the ball. Uh, There are 4.5 million people, nearly 4.5 million people in this country, some some form of physical or non-physical disability, visible or invisible, and only 54% of them are involved in the workforce. Uh, I'm 31 years old. That participation rate hasn't changed in 28 years. My whole life, it hasn't changed. And to be honest, that's not fair. That really isn't fair because people with a disability are ready to have the choice if they want to work just like anybody else. The unemployment rate of people with disability is more than double, almost triple that of able-bodied people. And you know what? 
the time to change that isn't now, it was yesterday, if I'm honest with you. But it is really awesome to be able to come here and talk about it because we all need to work together. Government, corporate, unions, everybody in our sector needs to come together and make this happen. Um, because to be honest, there are so many people with disability out there ready to have a crack. And some people want a job, for sure. But do you know what else some people want? They want a career. They want a leadership position. I don't want to scare you, but we want your seats as well. <laughs> Time to do it is now, and um, let's, in my case, metaphorically, kick some ass together. Thank you. So, what has been the reaction? It's been a couple of weeks since. Uh, do you feel that your voice was heard by the people in power who needed to hear it the most? Yeah, look, the I was pretty authentic there, a bit vulnerable, but like the word disability was literally said by everyone, and there wasn't really any disability voices. And I was like, yeah, look, cool, but like, let's words are done, let's do this, right? And there's actual ways you can do that by government investing more in programs to educate corporates to, you know, allow people to use the NDIS funding more flexibility to to be able to get that. But also, as a business can't wait for government to give money to do it. Yeah. Like, you should invest in your own business because of the consumers, us, people with disability are consumers and workforces should reflect the people that they're selling to. You mm. know what I mean? So, like, if you're on radio, for example, they've got to be relatable to the people that are listening. To, to keep coming back. People with disability, we shop, we go on planes, we do everything else. But if the whole workforce isn't represented by us, well then, you know, it's it's, it's actually bad business. And um, obviously the Queen passed away not long after that, so it was a bit of a hold on government, but there's some things that we're about to, like me personally with my consulting firm, but also our foundation. But I think a lot of a lot of organisations are ready to do some incredible work um, with disability. And, and I think that's, yeah, the thirst is there. Mm. The action needs to happen now. Um any backlash and can I ask a question a broader question do you think some of the comments that maybe you don't read necessarily on your page because people are following you for a reason therefore they probably appreciate your advocacy they love who you are as a person in and out of the chair that that doesn't bother them but you know when you go on to uh you know a Facebook page of a morning show for example and they share you know your speech and then if you look at the comments some pretty scathing responses right do you think for the most part and not based on population percentages or whatnot. We know that there's a huge population of people who are disabled. Do you think it's mostly able-bodied people making comments about how, because it doesn't affect them, shut up? Yeah, that element. A lot of them are just also trolls. Mm. Like they're just doing it for the sake of it. Um, but again, like, yes, I'm in that position to, to speak. Everyone's like, look, this no at all. I think it's no living. Mm. I don't. Like, I'm just, that's my... Like I'm just being chosen to do here. Like I didn't put my hand up, um, and I'm just doing the best that I can. Everyone is entitled to their opinion as well. Yeah. Like you know, it's funny. You, you get more upset if someone. I get more upset if someone bags you, than bags myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you care about the people that you love. And you've built up your own resilience to know that you can handle it. But yeah. you've also put yourself in a position that other people close to you can yeah. be affected by it, and they don't and deserve that. I used to get really flat, as you know, when other disabled people and advocates have a like real goal at me because mm. I'm just trying to do my best to support all of us, right? Of I genuinely am. They might think that's crap that I just want to get on the TV. At least I think I know you don't know. I know you know that. But I think also to be able to show that I actually know what I'm talking about, like stats and that. It's, I'm not just some tennis player. Yeah. Like I genuinely care and I invest time to do the best that I can do and I get it wrong sometimes for sure. Um, but, you know, whatever. People can say what they want. Well, you, we heard some of the, uh, the statistics in the audio from Canberra just before, but uh, we want to say this. Digital producers, uh, animators, video editors, please email me. With disability? Yeah, with disability. Yeah. Uh, please email me, angus at fromyourpocket.com.au uh, with some of your work. We have uh, a lot of projects on the go. We may need your work. And obviously, we're a disability podcast. Mm -hmm. We're an accessible podcast company. Inclusive um, as well. Inclusive, definitely. Yeah. We want all voices to be heard. And, you know, I think the statistics speak for themselves. The increase in morale, I need a kick. A nice little uh, pep in my step yeah. occasionally. So if you are in that space, um, you do love that sort of video editing. That's a space that we're interested in. And I'd love to, um, you know, look at your work and, you know, put you first through the door. So yeah. uh, send me an email. Uh, I'll put it below in the show notes. But um, what I made, it was a really beautiful speech. Thanks, man. And see organisations are like, where do I find employees with disability? Just say that. Like that's that. it. Just talk, call, do, do a call like that, you, yeah. that you're willing to do it. But, yeah, mate, I appreciate it. And um, as I said, pretty, pretty honoured to get the opportunity. And... Glad I didn't stuff it up too bad. Did a good job.